Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, back with another Dragalia Laws video! Yay! And just like the last one, it's more reading! Yay! Reading adventure! <laughs> so we're gonna go over the new mana- we have info for the mana spirals for Lucretia, Lucretia, Luca, and Estelle. So we're gonna be going over what they do, kinda talking about them a little bit, how they kinda feel. I will say right here at the beginning, light is the stuff I'm least- um, familiar with, so I'm kind of going to be, just to tell you up front, where I'm approaching these characters is kind of like looking at what they do, so I can't really speak to Tartarus that much, mainly because I haven't really had motivation to do it, because a lot of the teams right now are just using not light units, so I don't really see a point in investing in light units, it's very sad. Hopefully that new change will change everything though. But that's going to be today's video, so I hope you like it. If you do, uh, remember to leave a like, comment, tell me which one of these are you looking forward to, are you actually gonna use any of your stuff? Um, I would like to know. Please tell me. Alright, let's get into it. And subscribe to me if you want more Dragalia stuff. Alright, let's go. First we got Lucretia. She is the headliner, the headbanger, the head diva, everything. So we got Empowering Triplet, deals light damage to enemy directly ahead and increases the entire team's energy levels by two stages. When the user is energized, the area effect of the skill is increased and increases the entire team's critical rate by 10% for 30 seconds. Okay. Um, how big is that area of effect? Uh, Crescendo Chorus increases the user's strength by 15% for 15 seconds and increases the, uh, the user's energy uh, level by three stages. Mmm, okay. Skill damage, 15%. Light uh, energy equals inspirational 6. If the user is attuned to light, when, the ener when their energy level is increased, also increases their inspiration level by one stage. After activation, this ability will not activate again for 15 seconds. Benefits the whole team. So if the user is attuned to light, when their energy level is increased, also increases their inspiration level by one stage. Okay. Um... Energized strength plus 25%. Increased strength by 25% for 15 seconds each time the user is energized. Reduced susceptibility to curses by 100%. Of course, perfect. And when she gets hit by it, 50% attack. Broken Punisher 35%. Increases damage to enemies and break state by 35%. Uh, she seems very similar to how she is now. Um, they kind of kept her simple, it looks like to me. She seems like almost exactly the same except for she does way more stuff now. Um, much more focused on Energized with Galathor. Um, so something I was trying to figure out with this, so if the user is attuned to light, when their energy level is increased, also increases their inspiration level by one stage. Does that mean when Gal- because the Galathor I think just increases your energy level um, over time. So that means every time he does it, but then what about where right here where it's like three stages? So would you get all three? No, I don't think so. Hmm, a lot of a lot of stuff to kind of check out with her. Um, very simple um, by the outset of it, but I don't know, could be fun. Uh, the fact that this thing is one shareable is cool, and also that it increases in size every time you use it should be interesting to see. I'd like to see what that is. Um, just like all mana spirals. We kind of need to see damage mods, they don't tell us anything about that, so that's something we won't know about until the actual day of release, so something to keep in mind for sure. Luca, we got Radiant Bonds, deals light damage to the target and inflicts paralysis, sure. Bolt of Light and it's shareable. Bolt of Light deals light damage to the enemy in a line and dispels one buff from each target. Paralyzed foes take extra damage. Skill Haze 15%, Defense 3% is a chain co-op ability. Abilities, full HP equals strength and paralysis edge 1, increases strength by 15%, and the chance of inflicting paralysis by 60% when HP is full. And he has potent curse resistance and poison resistance 100%. That's... Is he the first unit to get... No, he's not the first unit to get double resistance. He might be the first one for the... No, that might not be true either. Either way, it's very rare for someone to get um, double dual resistance. They usually... Well, for this stuff, they usually make it like 50% or something. Um, good, because I'm pretty sure the Agito inflicts both of these statuses, so that should help out with that there. Um, he has a Dispel on his skill too, which is very good. And Radiant Bonds uh, should be pretty solid. A lot of light is focused on Paralysis, and this is a free shareable skill. Um, so we're just gonna have to wait and see for damage mods to see how much damage he actually deals with it. Um, if it's high, 
like uh, Ransel, usually for story uh, mana spirals, they're all really good. Um, for example, Ron Ronzel's is very good. The Prince's is very good. So there's no reason that Luca's shouldn't also be very good. Um, it's kind of one of those things where just wait. But uh, I don't know. It's very interesting. He was in a very interesting spot because um, you can't really use Galaluca if you ha you can't really use Galaluca and Luca because they're both light units and they both um, share the same name. So if you wanted to use them for light content, you have to basically make a choice between a Luca or a Galaluca. Now, obviously, not everyone can have Galaluca. For example, I don't have Galaluca, so I don't really have that problem. I can just run Luca. Um, and then I would get screwed over because Summer Luca is also a light. I don't understand why Luca and Mim, for some reason, are the only characters that always stick to their element. It's really dumb, to be honest. Um, interesting. Waiting to see more. Have to see more, but very simple, of course. But simple can be good. You don't need an entire wall of text to be a good character. Um, to function correctly, it turns out you don't need a lot. You just need enough. Next we got Estelle, she's got Healing Faith, restores HP to the team members most in need and increases their HP by 15%. For the remainder of the quest, once buff reaches the limit and HP uh, hit <laughs> once HP buff reached the limit, an HP recovery effect is granted instead. Alright, Guardian's Grace, restore HP to all allies and continues healing over the next 15 seconds. Very nice. Uh, recover potency 20%, light HP 8, uh, 7%. The Loving Hand increases... See, this is what I was talking about right here. And the Loving Hand increases force strike damage by 40% and skill gauge fill rate by 8%. Also immediately readies the Guardian Grace skill for use when the HP drops to 30%. After activating this effect, will not activate again for... Wait a minute, so she just... Every time she drops... That's kind of... That's really good. That's better than what I would expect for a 3, to be honest. Um, obviously, 60 seconds is a lot, because it's another minute, but you never know sometimes when all you're doing is healing. Um, man. Alright. Opponent curse resistance 50% and curse resistance 50%. No, this was a... Yeah, I'm, I'm a dumb dumb. This was both for curse, so she has 100% curse resistance. Um, huh. So that's Estelle. Um, her skill one seems pretty interesting. I like this um, healing. A couple of different healers have this effect where they just heal whoever's in most in need. Um, and I think it's really fun, actually. The one thing I'm trying to remember, the one thing I do know for sure is that the Agido fight um, actually has a lot of negatives if you're um, healing. Like, it he tries to lower the healing of the entire team, so you can't heal- the heal rate, I guess, is the word I'm trying to say, but I can't remember what they call it in-game. Um, so that can actually screw over, um, a healer if they're not paying close attention, or if it's a not- they're not very good at healing. Um... Hmm... I don't know. I think she sounds pretty good, though. She's just a healer. That's all she's doing. Um... Increased force strike damage is interesting, though. The, the, I like this skill a whole bunch, actually. It's a shame that mana spirals cost so much, because if they didn't, I would gladly mana spiral her. Mana spiral her. Um, she seems pretty fun. She seems like a pretty decent healer for a three star with a mana spiral. Uh, and that's three mana spirals coming tomorrow. Um, Obviously, I really would like- I'm gonna have to wait and see on Lucretia. Um, I do have Galathor, um, as I think I said previously. If you see my summon video, I didn't get it, but if you look at the comments, I do say I ended up doing two multis later and getting him. Um, because I have no self-control. Uh, and if you're saving for the second year, you should continue saving. Don't follow my example. Um... But yeah, I'm very curious. The other thing to actually keep in mind is that um, these are also mana spirals that are probably with the idea that later on light's getting buffed. So if they don't seem super crazy um, right now, just remember that if they were crazy game-breaking broken, uh, they would be even better 
by the time. So chances are they're just kind of good to serviceable. And then when the gap date comes, they're going to be really, really powerful. So we'll see. It's very interesting. But that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Um, tell me which one of these you like. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like. Remember if you are subscribed to me. I think I've checked, last time I checked, it's around around 50% of the people who watch my Dragalia stuff don't actually sub to me, I think. That are, it's very interesting tactics, but if you're afraid, I don't bite. The song ended. <laughs> so that's my side of saying goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.